Hello, and welcome to the SimScale and ValleySpace video demonstration. Today, we are going to see how ValleySpace and SimScale can be combined to help engineering and design teams communicate and iterate faster through design variations, especially in complex engineering systems. In this demonstration, we are about to study an electric vehicle system focusing on a battery pack cooling subcomponent. A very generic schematic of components around the battery pack involves the drive motor, the cooling system, and any auxiliary components like pumps, heat exchangers, or HVAC systems. Engineers can use SimScale to perform rapid cloud-based simulations in all of these different components. Since we are focusing on the battery pack cooling, our main design goal is to determine a proper setup in order to avoid any overheating during the electric motor operation. We can potentially change many different parameters like the cooling channel shape, the coolant material, or the power of the cooling system, for example. Ultimately, the maximum cell temperature should not exceed 40 degrees Celsius, together with a safety factor of 1.5 degrees. Each design variation might create several changes in other subsystems as well, not only in regards to the battery pack, but also to other vehicle operations. In very complex systems, like an electric vehicle, for example, it might be really hard to track all these changes. However, with the help of Valley Space, all the different subsystems can be connected together, allowing engineers to get rapid feedback on the effect of their design changes. SimScale can be easily coupled to this workflow via the API, and together with Valley Space can help in the early approval or failure of the new design iterations. Now, let's go to SimScale and explore our initial design. I am already inside the SimScale platform, where I have created a new project and uploaded the CAD model of the battery pack and the cooling system. In this project, I have already created a new simulation that corresponds to the baseline design. We can see all of the different materials used, the different boundary condition, including mass flow inlets and external walls, as well as power sources that will tell how much heat is generated by each individual cell. The first run is already computed, and we can easily take a look at some of the saved results, like the temperature or the velocity field, for example. Now let's go to Valley Space to see how we can trigger new simulations combining the power of the two tools. In Valley Space, I have created a new battery pack project and a custom dashboard that will help me control of my simulations. I can choose to submit a new simulation, navigate to my SimScale dashboard, or include additional functionalities. In Valley Space, I have built all the different electric wheel components including the auxiliary systems, the battery and the cooling system, as well as the drive motor. Any and all of these systems can be interconnected, meaning that changes applied one system can be leaked and affect the others. Increasing the drive motor mode, for example, can lead in higher heat generation on the battery cells. And this is a scenario we're going to study in this case. But first, let's take a look at the system requirements. In Valley Space, I can create several requirements that will help me validate new design changes with respect to the battery pack or the cooling system, for example. I can create requirements related to the maximum battery voltage or the capacity and then link them to new requirements within my system. For this demonstration, despite we have created a list of different requirements, we are only using a single maximum temperature requirement to demonstrate the workflow. Valley Space can pull the data from a finished simulation in SimScale and can create automated reports listing all the valuable info like inputs, outputs, as well as many different plots like residual plots and post-processing screenshots that we have created in SimScale. It also summarizes a, a go-no-go -no -go matrix with all the created requirements that help the designer quickly understand if the design passes or not the test. In this case, our Single requirement is, is verified as the maximum temperature is not surpassing the limit we have set and it lies below the 38.5 degrees. Now I want to go back to my components level and while keeping the cooling mass flow rate 
and uh, the cooling material the same, I'd like to go ahead and test my drive motor in the new power mode. I can create automations that anytime something is changing in the configuration, a new simulation is launched, or choose to have full control and manually set off new simulation jobs whenever required. Once I'm happy that all the settings are okay, I can go back to my dashboard and submit a new simulation to SimScale. A new run has already been set up and started in SimScale corresponding to the new configuration, that of the new power mode. This leads to higher heat being generated by the battery cells, and it's now 13 watts instead of 12. Once the simulation is over, the results are automatically transferred back to Valley Space. All this process is automated via the built in scripting functionality available in the platform that builds in all the operations coming from the SimCell SDK and allows perfect communication via the API. The results are now being automatically updated in the report, and we can immediately see that the new power mode has a big effect in the maximum temperature. It leads the maximum temperature to exceed the threshold, thus the new design fails the verification process as it can be easily seen in the go no go matrix. I can now go back to my components and increase the cooling system capacity by doubling the flow rate. I'm expecting that this change will mitigate the temperature rise that was noticed because of the new power mode. Off to my dashboard and ready to submit a new SimScale simulation. The new simulation is finished and I can do some live post processing with the power of SimScale in the cloud. I can inspect different results like velocity streamlines or temperature distribution, for example, on the surface of my model, and of course, save nice screenshots and animations. Now, going back to Valor Space, the report has been already updated with the new results showing that doubling the cooling system flow rate helped to prevent the peak temperature from rising above the threshold which was set in my requirements. So here we have set up an example of how SimScale and Valid Space can be integrated into your configuration management and development process. How would you use this capability? Get in touch with us to start today. Mm -hmm.